technology is a wonderful thing. It doesn't always work when you want it to. And and the reality of that is is that you know that's our lives. Everything is like that in our lives, and, and with connection technology and what we do with Thunderbolt, it changes all of that because it's not just connectivity. It's display port for color, color corrected monitoring. I mean, in a modern world where we're talking about HDR and 8K and everything else, the continuity of your image is the most important thing. Thunderbolt allows that in your system. Thunderbolt's going to do data workflows at up to 2,800 megabytes a second, consistently to being able to do more than you've ever done before. A collection of Thunderbolt drives will allow power and support. The rugged drives from the C, you can take anywhere, you can drop them, and they're made to take force impacts. And the USB-C connector simplifies connectivity for everything. Whether you're working in Windows, whether you're working in Mac, Thunderbolt's going to allow you the power to do what you need to do for your workflow. It's about leveraging the technology and speed of data with what we do. It's about understanding that it's not just one kind of connector and one kind of world where we have to have you know, USB-C and USB and Thunderbolt and Ethernet. We're talking about networking in, another, in a new way. Thunderbolt's going to enable small work groups to, to connect via a single cable and be able to share data in real time. But one of the most powerful things for Thunderbolt for me, not just the data transfer and just the support from companies like Lassie that give us this unbelievable power, is that Thunderbolt is going to enable HDR in a way that we haven't thought about. I mean, as we move to high dynamic range imaging, these, these large files and large content and deep color files, we're going to have to handle that in a 10-bit nature. And we need a minimum of 10 bits to be able to support that so that it's not overwhelming our systems. And that 10 bits of data, 10 24 levels of gray per channel of color, give us more. Give us what we can do, whether it's HDR, whether it's HLG, whether it's um, HD10, HDR10+. There's all these different stages for this, but the DisplayPort underlaying of Thunderbolt gives us a true, clean signal that allows us to do more. Because Thunderbolt gives you the power with a single cable to be able to move data, to move picture, to do networking, to handle all of your needs on a modern desktop. It's going to make your computer smaller. It's going to make them faster. It's going to be enable external GPU processing via Thunderbolt. So now we're in a system where we can actually do external GPU processing, high-speed data processing, unbelievable wide color gamut information, all from a laptop. I mean, Thunderbolt enables a machine in a way that I couldn't do on a desktop four years ago. The power needs are unbelievable. The power to do this, and gee, I can charge things on it. Um, I have one of the new Bolt drives, and I love the fact that it actually charges my laptop when I'm connected to it. And it's like, so here's a hard drive. I no longer have to, have to take up an extra port to charge my laptop because the Bolt storage is allowing me to do that. And that, those are the little things that LaCie adds to the game that allow your workflow to enable a better you. Because that's what this is about. You want to work faster. You want to move faster. You'd like to go home at night. Thunderbolt's going to allow you to do that because you're moving data at the speed of light. Thunderbolt was based as an optical property. And when you start talking about moving data at gigabytes per second, it changes everything because you're no longer waiting, you're, you know, I, I work on set all the time. I do feature films and things. I'm the last guy to leave the set because I'm moving data and moving data. By being able to use Thunderbolt to accelerate my workflow, I can now take that extra bit of time to do what I need to do and then go home at night because Thunderbolt gives me the power and the speed to take care of my problems quickly. When you start moving data, I mean, I mean, how many times have you plugged something in and you look at it, it's like, okay, it's going to be 45 minutes to an hour before I have to go anywhere. With Thunderbolt, that's minutes instead of hours. And that's the difference in a modern workflow. And as we start doing high dynamic range imaging and 8K and raw files, you start moving massive amounts of data. It's not uncommon on a modern set today to shoot five to seven terabytes of data on set per day. Start thinking about how you're going to move that, how you're going to back it up, how you're going to transfer that much data on a regular basis. And when you start talking about moving these sheer amounts of data, how do you maintain it? Well, Thunderbolt gives me the ability to do that. 
And this extra layer of you know, net Ethernet networking that's built into the Thunderbolt protocol gives me the ability to mount multiple machines to share a single storage volume. Not like in the old days where we had to have a switch or something else in there. You can directly plug in two devices into a Thunderbolt network and create a Thunderbolt network on a big 12, on a big 6. <clears throat> and these give you the power to do more. I mean, how many times have you wanted to have two people working off the same data? Or somebody, you know, your graphics guy is doing something and he's doing graphics while you're editing and you need to take it in real time. It's no longer sneaker net. It's, I can just reach on the drive and grab it without having a server, without having to connect to a network, just right off the single stage storage that I'm working from. And that's like a groundswell change for the way that people work. As video production has gone from big companies and broadcasters to individual YouTube artists and people who deliver content on the web, now these small work groups can be enabled by Thunderbolt in a way they've never been able to before because it's a simple, easy way to connect. This is a good example. This was actually a project I worked on a couple of years ago for Intel. And we did, we moved 12 terabytes of data on this job in an afternoon. <laughs> he did that, yeah. You didn't do that, but you were there. <laughs> but it's funny because because people, people don't think about how much it, it works on. This is a, a, it's done with a high-speed phantom camera, 4K flex. Um, a terabyte mag takes 5,000 frames. Not minutes, frames. So you have to understand it works at a completely different level. In a terabit, at 1,000 frames a second, you get five seconds of video on that, front, that thing. But think about going through 10 or 12 bags of this a day of information and how you're going to handle it. How are you going to be able to control the essence of how this data moves? Now this is another unique camera <clears throat> because it uses Ethernet 10 gig as, as its connectivity to a shuttle drive. So via Thunderbolt, I'm able to connect to a 10 gig -y adapter that allows me to draw this data out at 10 gig -y speeds, like eight, just under 800 megabytes a second, and be able to extract the data off the mags and deliver it to solid state, to redundant storage, and to LTO tape backup simultaneously. And we pulled it off and, and pulled it directly to solid state and then copied it to spinning disks so that we had the speed and error correction of a solid state setup and then allowed us to share across multiple drives. That's the kind of power that Thunderbolt gives you. It, I can take workstation level performance in my laptop. I mean, if I don't know anybody who's not surprised at getting over a gigabyte a second data transfers. Uh, it changes the way you work. It changes the way you edit, it changes the way you think, and it changes the way you maintain data because you're now have so much more ability to do things in raw files from Reds or Blackmagic files or work with Airy Raw or Sony Raw. And this power that you have with all of this is so important because it allows you to do more. It allows you to do what you want to do without restriction. But the sub-layer, I keep going back to DisplayPort because it's one of the most important parts of Thunderbolt for me, is that the DisplayPort layer in Thunderbolt, which is passed through all of this, allows to you to maintain 10-bit color quality all the time. It's not going to vary. You using HDMI for a connectivity, you don't know what you're going to get. It could be HDMI 1.2, 1.4, it might even be 1.1, and, and you have no consistency with it. And most of that is not going to be any more than that. Hello, John. <laughs> so it's interesting that people don't think about that. They don't understand what they're looking at. They don't understand how, you know, un having the, the video path, the image path as part of their data path. And it's a secure part of Thunderbolt. So now you can have this marriage of data, Ethernet, USB, you know, all the other protocols that we use. I don't care whether it's eSATA or Thunderbolt or, you know, eSATA or, or FireWire or USB or anything you want to use. I still people use eSATA. I don't know why. But as you start going to Thunderbolt, it changes all that. With the advent of the USB-C protocol and the USB-C connectivity, now you have this additional layer of technology because it's a unified connector now. If you stick a USB-C drive into a Thunderbolt port, you get everything that you get on USB-C. You get everything under the USB 3.1 protocol, it does everything it wants to. And on Thunderbolt, you have two full separate layers of that. So you can bond two complete layers of USB 3.1 under a single Thunderbolt protocol. But it gets back to the speed. It's the speed of the storage, it's the speed of the technology, and it's the speed that allows you to move faster than you've been able to before. 
because I don't know about anybody else, but the last thing I like to do is sit around sitting in a computer watching drive spin. It's just not fun. And, and while you're doing it, with Thunderbolt, you can take care of menial tasks to do that because it's such a short time frame that it happens. You now have the ability to do three or four things simultaneously. And whether you work on Macs or PCs, I don't care, it works across the board. The PC manufacturers have been wonderful in starting to support Thunderbolt at all levels. The only thing we haven't seen yet is a desktop level Thunderbolt 3 solution. Plenty of USB-C connectivity, plenty of other things, but, but soon you're going to start seeing desktops on the Windows side that support Thunderbolt 3 and the USB-C protocols. And that's going to change everything for all of us because it means smaller and lighter and faster. Blackmagic just came out with new boards for DaVinci run on the USB-C protocol. There, are, there is actually USB-C, but you have to think about USB-C and Thunderbolt as a combined environment because Thunderbolt enables everything that's possible over that connector. Whereas USB-C is only going to give you the limits of what it can do, just 10 gigs. And, and at 10 gigabits, you're still, I mean, you're moving a lot of data. It's faster than a lot of people have ever worked before. But think about being four times faster than that. With the storage arrays, we, you know, we've got a 72 terabyte, a 96 terabyte Big 12. That's a lot of data. But in a modern world where you're doing terabytes of camera data per day, you need that much storage to be able to do it. You need to, to be able to archive not only your, your master of camera footage, your proxy files, your graphic files, any stills that go with it, multiple versions of, of, of the project. All of these things can be stored in a single volume that's RAID redundant. And that's part of this too, is, is that you have these protocols and now with the speed that we're working at, you have redundancy, you have speed, you have power, and you have the quality of storage to be able to take any kind of production on the road. As you've seen in the cart over here, it's the innovator cart, the big 12 laying on its side. Think about going on set with, with 70 terabytes or more of state storage. That's unheard of. Just two years ago, you were lucky to be carrying four or five terabytes, 10 terabytes of data filled your cart. And now I'm carrying an array that's not that large and not that heavy to be able to carry 90 terabytes. You know, almost, that's a lot of information. You know, you start getting into petabytes, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. You start getting beyond terabytes of data. It's like, hmm, you're, it's ter petabytes, hmm. And, and that's the change in all of this. And, and the ability to network them, the ability to share them. The ability to move them around in the environment allows us to do what we've never been able to do before. And that's create. We're now not worried about the technology. We're actually got to the point where we're actually creating content and, and going back to being creative artists. This was the fun one. I don't know if you guys are, are, are watching this, but when you look at it, make sure that you note one thing. Every time it cuts, the glass changes position, direction. And all the way through this, every time there's a cut, the glass changes direction. And, it, and as an artist, I did that subconsciously when I cut this. I didn't do it thinking that's what I wanted to do. I did that That's because the way the rhythm worked. Because I didn't have to be worrying about anything else. I could sit down and actually concentrate on doing the artistic side of my job, which is not moving data. It's not holding picture. The artistic part of my job is actually cutting and editing and making pictures that people want to look at. It's a brave new world out there. And, and, and it's such that, that we have, as artists, a new level of connectivity. How many people do VR? Anybody do VR? VR is the big buzzword here at the show. Now think about you know, offloading VR cameras. You know, I work with a jaunt rig. It's got 24 separate SD cards in it. So think about moving 24, 128, 256 gig SD cards and how long that's going to take you in a workflow. With a Thunderbolt solution, I use a Lexar a media adapter, but we use that for that, and it, I can get all 24 cards up at once, and the speed of the Thunderbolt bus to a RAID a Big 12 actually allows me to move all that data so fast, I, have, I keep losing track of how much I've actually gotten done. And I have to manually, because it's taking care of that time for me, it's actually reading that information because I no longer have to sit and think about one card at a time. I could put six or 12 or 18 or 24 cards up on a reader and have them all simultaneously pouring down the same pipe. That is a leverage that we haven't had before. That is the level of technology that we do with Thunderbolt that we're now, that's now taken all of this major desktop influence onto your laptop. And it's just started. 
the drives are getting smaller and faster. I've got a bolt right now. And it's like, there's nothing like sitting on your desktop and connecting to a, to a drive. And it's like, sit there and it's like, oh yeah, um, wow, this is really fast. Gee, this is faster than I think it is. Wow, this is 2.2 2 gigabytes a second. Okay. Well, and, and for a guy like me that works in high-end cinema, I mean, we're doing ACES color correction, we're doing things like that. So it's not uncommon for us to be working in files of 16-bit depth, very, very large. In an open AXR workflow, it's not uncommon for a computer to be churning out, you know, files that are 500, 600 megabytes of frame at 4K. So you're moving five or 600 megabytes a frame for some of this content. And being able to do that in real time on these devices is unheard of. <laughs> hey, we're giving away a drive in a second. <laughs> giving away a drive, Get, come on, come on, stay here. Dri give it a drive. <laughs> Bunch of students from the University of Atlanta here. Um, but that's the technology that this is. And it's and really what it's about is making your life easier. It made my life easier, allowed me to do things faster, to do things in a, in a much faster fashion than I'd ever been able to do before. And that means I have more free time. That means I have time to relax and time to understand. I have time to go get coffee. I have time to do the things that I need to do, to do paperwork while I'm waiting for data transfer. I'm not spending days doing this. I'm spending hours or minutes moving the same data that two or three years ago I had to suffer through. And that's what Thunderbolt's about. <clears throat> is making your life on set easier. Whether you're a still photographer, whether you're a budding cinematographer, whether you're working feature films like I do, Thunderbolt is a technology that's gonna enable you to do more. Uh, one of my friends, Phil Holland, anybody heard of Phil Holland, an 8K guy, does a lot of stuff with Red. He's been using the Big Six and Big 12 Thunderbolt 3 solutions on Windows for a project he's showing here at the show. So if you get a chance to go over in the other hall, in the, uh, 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 over in the central hall, he's in the Atomos booth and some other places, showing Thunderbolt technology and doing for, for aerials, for commercial products, for all these kinds of things. He moved 97 terabytes of data in one day that he captured on a red camera. Now think about that, 97 terabytes of data in one day. And it took him less than three hours to move it. So, so you think about that, so 97 terabytes, three hours to transfer that. How long would it take you to move 97 terabytes? Yeah, <laughs> probably three days for most people. Actually, 97 terabytes is, is one of those targets, you know, 100 terabytes of petabyte of data is kind of one of the targets that I use for people because they, they need to understand that we're getting to that point with all of this data. And on FireWire 800, moving 97 terabytes takes 16 and a half days. <laughs> 16 and a half, 24 hour days processing data to be able to move that same content over FireWire that you're now moving in Thunderbolt. And the devices are smaller. There's less interface, there's less everything, and it's a plug and play environment. Power, drives, everything you need. So I want to thank everybody for coming. We're going to do a raffle, so make sure everybody got a raffle ticket. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do this. It's a USB-C version. This is, which I have a couple of these, these are great. One of the things to remember about Thunderbolt 3, especially for the students back there, is that not all computers are created equal. Not all the manufacturers are supplying Thunderbolt technology. So, so when you're working with Thunderbolt, understand that there will be gives and takes at times. And, and, and you talk about your friends, talk to the machines, look at the specifications for them, because there's nothing, but most of the technology that's out there is gonna give you the best quality that you can possibly get. And it's gonna allow you guys to be better artists, better filmmakers, and be able to see the rest of your life without having to wait for the data to process.